Top 40 gay closet cases in Hollywood that will shock you. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're about to drop the mic with top 40 gay closet cases in Hollywood that will shock you. You think you know Hollywood? Think again. We're pulling back the curtain on the dazzling disguises of A-list stars who kept their true selves under wraps. Get ready for a jaw-dropping journey through Tinseltown's best-kept secrets. Who's in the closet and who's coming out? The truth is about to hit the fan. Greta Garbo. Greta Garbo, the renowned Swedish actress who shone brightly in Hollywood during the 1920s and 1930s, made a decisive exit from her acting career and public appearances at just 35 years old. Throughout her life, Garbo never entered into marriage or had children. It is believed that she was proposed to by at least two men, Lars Saxon, a Swedish publisher, and John Gilbert, a prominent figure in American silent films. However, Garbo is said to have rejected Gilbert's proposals on three occasions. In a letter that came to light through the Postal Museum on MGM stationery, Garbo pens to Saxon, I will probably remain a bachelor all my life. Wife is such an ugly word. Garbo's bisexuality was widely recognized within the Hollywood community and has become increasingly acknowledged by the public over time. She was an alluring figure who garnered affection from both genders and reciprocated their love with equal fervor. Her romantic and intimate relationships with several female Hollywood stars were well known. Rather than misleading the press with falsehoods, Garbo maintained silence about her personal affairs, which added an element of intrigue to her public image. One of her most talked about relationships was undoubtedly with Marlene Dietrich, Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford, an icon of the silver screen, is often recalled for her signature style, featuring ankle-strapped shoes, prominent shoulder pads, and a penchant for high-proof vodka. However, contemporary film enthusiasts may not be as aware of the speculation surrounding her personal life and sexual orientation. Crawford was known for her relationships with men, earning her the nickname Maneater, but there have long been whispers that she was also attracted to women. The question of Crawford's sexuality remains a topic of debate. Since her passing, various reports have surfaced suggesting that she engaged in romantic relationships with notable figures such as Barbara Stanwyck, Marilyn Monroe, Martha Ray, and the lesser-known actress and choreographer Maren Morgan. These accounts have contributed to the ongoing conversation about Crawford's private life, though definitive conclusions remain elusive. Ramon Navarro. Following on our agenda is Ramon Navarro, renowned for his portrayal of the protagonist in the 1925 adaptation of Ben-Hur. A prominent figure during the silent film era, Navarro, hailing from Mexico, swiftly rose to prominence as one of Hollywood's most celebrated stars. His good looks and zealous nature won him a spot among the elite of the movie industry. However, beneath the sparkling facade of Hollywood, Navarro grappled with the conflict between his attraction to men and his Catholic faith, resorting to alcohol as a means to soothe his emotional turmoil. Struggling to accept his homosexuality, he sought solace in the company of hired hustlers in clandestine arrangements to alleviate his feelings of isolation. Tragically, Navarro's life concluded with a horrific incident in the late 1960s when he invited two young men to his residence. The encounter took a grim turn as these men allegedly subjected Navarro to torture before taking his life. The perpetrators were subsequently apprehended, found guilty, sentenced to prison terms, and eventually released on parole. Raymond Burr. Next we have Raymond Burr, a prominent Canadian-American actor celebrated for his role as the astute defense attorney Perry Mason in the television series that bears his character's name. Burr's commanding screen presence and acting range were on full display in this popular show. Like Navarro, Burr also faced challenges with his homosexuality, but unlike him, he was not as forthcoming about it. Burr was far more private about his sexual orientation and did not resort to clandestine meetings with hustlers. Instead, he chose to conceal his homosexuality through deception. He went to great lengths to fabricate a story about a fictitious marriage to a woman who, in his tale, had died along with their supposed child. This elaborate ruse was crafted to disguise his true sexual identity from the public eye. Do you believe that Raymond Burr's decision to fabricate a story about a fictitious marriage was necessary to protect his career and reputation at the time? Comment with yes or no. Tom Hardy. All the time you were talking about dirty f***ing Jews, all the f***ing time. Following on our list is Tom Hardy, 
a distinguished British actor and producer recognized for his powerful performances and remarkable ability to adapt to diverse roles. Born in 1977 in London, Hardy's acting journey began in the early 2000s with appearances in films such as Black Hawk Down and Star Trek Nemesis. His career progressed with leading roles in critically acclaimed movies like Inception, The Revenant and Mad Max Fury Road earning him several accolades, including a British Academy Film Award for Best Actor. Hardy has played a significant role in promoting LGBTQ plus representation in the media. He has garnered acclaim for his thoughtful and empathetic portrayal of queer characters, exemplified by his performances in The Revenant and Legend. Hardy has also been candid about his own sexuality, choosing not to define himself with labels such as gay or straight, but instead describing himself as open-minded. His openness to discuss his sexuality and his positive depictions of LGBTQ plus characters have made him an inspirational figure for many. Quicker! 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 F off! His contributions to the portrayal of LGBTQ plus relationships have been particularly impactful. Notably, Hardy's portrayal in The Revenant of a Same-Sex Relationship set in the 19th century has been highly praised. This stands out as a departure from the stereotypical or unrealistic depictions of same-sex relationships often seen in popular culture. By illustrating that LGBTQ plus relationships can be as intricate and multifaceted as any other, Hardy's work is instrumental in challenging stereotypes and expanding societal understanding of diverse sexualities. Cary Grant. Sir, no, no, you take your hands off me or I'll sue you. Uh oh, the. Oh. Oh. Cary Grant stands as an iconic leading man from the golden age of Hollywood yet his personal life was far more intricate than the roles he played on screen. Despite being married five times and engaging in several high-profile relationships with women, there were persistent rumors about Grant's relationships with men. Although he never openly discussed his sexual orientation, whispers of his bisexuality have circulated. In recent times, there has been a resurgence of interest in Grant's private life, with some suggesting he might have been among the first celebrities to be openly bisexual. Now, come on. Let's talk about you. The truth may forever remain elusive, but Grant's enigmatic persona endures. While confirming Cary Grant's sexuality with certainty might not be feasible, his impact on LGBTQ plus visibility is clear. During an era when openly identifying as queer was taboo in Hollywood, Grant managed to defy conventional expectations of masculinity and establish a unique archetype for male leads. By subtly challenging gender stereotypes on screen, Grant became a pioneering figure in the portrayal of LGBTQ plus characters in cinema. Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper is an acclaimed American journalist and television personality, widely recognized as the host of CNN's Anderson Cooper 360 de Degre. Born in 1967 in New York City, Cooper is the offspring of fashion designer Gloria Vanderbilt and is a beneficiary of the Vanderbilt family wealth. His professional journey commenced as a fact checker for Channel One News before transitioning into broadcast journalism. He also holds a notable familial connection as a fifth cousin to media magnate and former US President Theodore Roosevelt. In contrast to Kevin Spacey, Anderson Cooper has been transparent about his sexuality since 2012. In a candid email to a friend, he stated, the fact is, I'm gay, always have been, always will be, and I couldn't be any more happy, comfortable with myself and proud. Following this revelation, Cooper has emerged as a fervent supporter of LGBTQ plus rights and has emphasized the significance of coming out publicly. In 2015, he made history by becoming the first openly gay individual to moderate a major American network news program. Cooper's public coming out has been lauded as a landmark event for the LGBTQ plus community, especially in terms of media visibility. However, his disclosure was not universally welcomed. Some critics contended that he chose to come out later in life, possibly waiting until his professional status was more secure. In response to such remarks, Cooper explained that he came out on his own terms and at the right time for him personally. Regardless of these debates, his openness about his sexuality has undoubtedly contributed to greater normalization of LGBTQ plus representation in both media and popular culture. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey is a renowned American actor and producer who gained prominence in the 1990s with his notable performances in films such as The Usual Suspects, L.A. Confidential, and American Beauty. 
Born in 1959 in New Jersey, Spacey honed his acting skills at the Juilliard School before embarking on a career in theatre. His talent has been recognised with two Academy Awards, two Golden Globes, and a Tony Award for his work on stage and screen. However, his professional journey has been overshadowed by allegations of sexual misconduct that emerged in recent years. Spacey's sexuality has been a topic of speculation, with the actor never addressing these rumours publicly. The situation intensified in 2017 when actor Anthony Rapp accused Spacey of making sexual advances towards him when Rapp was still a teenager. This accusation was followed by similar allegations from multiple other men. In 2020, Spacey faced charges of sexual assault in the UK, but these charges were eventually dropped due to insufficient evidence. While Spacey has consistently denied these allegations, the controversy has cast a long shadow over his career and public image. The allegations against Spacey have had a significant impact on his professional life, leading to a decline in his career and a retreat from public life. Moreover, these incidents have sparked critical discussions about issues of consent and power imbalances, especially within the entertainment industry. John Travolta, says war. John Travolta is a celebrated American actor and singer who gained widespread recognition in the 1970s for his iconic roles in Saturday Night Fever and Grease. Born in 1954 in Englewood, New Jersey, Travolta initially treaded the boards as a stage actor and featured on the TV series Welcome Back, Cotter, before his cinematic breakthrough. His filmography since then includes notable titles such as Pulp Fiction, Get Shorty, and Face Off. Throughout his career, there has been ongoing conjecture about Travolta's sexuality. He has been married to actress Kelly Preston since 1991, and they share three children. However, in the early 2000s, Travolta faced a lawsuit from an individual alleging a sexual relationship with the actor. Though the case was later dismissed, it reignited public curiosity about Travolta's personal life. Despite these events, Travolta has never made an official statement addressing the rumors surrounding his sexuality. In a related historical context, Tyrone Power was an iconic leading man during Hollywood's golden age, captivating female fans with his charm. Despite his on-screen persona and public image, Power's off-screen life was quite distinct. According to Scotty Bowers, a well-known figure from Hollywood's golden age, Power had a preference for men despite having high-profile relationships with women. Bowers hints at numerous intimate encounters he shared with Power without elaborating on specifics. Cesar Romero, an openly gay actor who was also candid about Power's sexuality in the 1996 publication Hollywood Gays, corroborated that Power was bisexual. Power is known to have had a close relationship with his co-star Charles Lawton, who had unconventional sexual preferences. Bower's account suggests that Power shared similar predilections, which might explain the frequent meetings between the two actors. James Dean. I used to fly around quite a bit, you know. I took a lot of unnecessary chances. It's important to note that the following information is based on hearsay and should be taken with caution. There have been several allegations of James Dean engaging in homosexual activities during the pinnacle of his career. In 2016, the book James Dean Tomorrow Never Comes by Danforth Prince and Darwin Porter, who are recognized for their vivid narratives about classic Hollywood, suggested that Dean had a clandestine romantic relationship with the equally popular Marlon Brando. While their accounts are known for being quite dramatic, their assertion that many attendees at parties Dean might have attended were gay has only added fuel to the existing speculation surrounding these rumors. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan is an American actress and singer who gained prominence in the early 2000s as a child actress, starring in films such as The Parent Trap and Freaky Friday. As she matured, she encountered difficulties with substance abuse and other personal issues, which often placed her in the spotlight of tabloid media. During the mid 2000s, Lohan publicly identified as bisexual becoming a significant figure within the LGBTQ plus community. She has been candid about her sexuality and her battles with addiction, also championing mental health awareness. Despite her personal struggles, Lohan has successfully staged a comeback in recent years and remains an influential figure. Her personal life has been extensively covered by the media and has been marked by numerous challenges and controversies. Nevertheless, Lohan has leveraged her public platform to advocate for various social issues. She has been an outspoken proponent of women's rights and has collaborated with organizations like the United Nations to promote gender equality. 
Additionally, she has addressed environmental concerns and participated in initiatives such as the Global Poverty Project. Amidst her tumultuous personal life, Lindsay Lohan has endeavoured to use her influence for constructive purposes and to contribute positively to societal issues. On a scale of zero, five, how inspiring do you find Lindsay Lohan's ability to overcome her personal struggles and stage a successful comeback in her career? Comment with a number to share your thoughts. Ellen DeGeneres. On. Ellen DeGeneres is a highly influential figure within the LGBTQ community and popular culture. She initially gained fame in the late 1990s as the lead in her own sitcom, Ellen. During the fourth season, she made a historic move by portraying her characters coming out as gay, marking her as the first openly gay actor to depict an openly gay role on a major network television series. This episode was a pivotal moment in TV history and initiated widespread discussions about LGBTQ plus representation. Following the conclusion of her sitcom, DeGeneres transitioned into a highly successful career as a talk show host, where she has consistently used her platform to champion LGBTQ plus rights. Beyond her hosting duties, she has been an active advocate for LGBTQ plus equality, participating in various campaigns and initiatives, such as the Human Rights Campaign's National Coming Out Project and the NOH8 campaign. DeGeneres has also dedicated time to raising awareness on topics like marriage equality and anti-bullying efforts. Her contributions have been recognized with numerous accolades, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the GLAAD Stephen F. Kolzak Award. Ellen DeGeneres stands as a pioneering force in the ongoing struggle for LGBTQ plus equality. George Michael. George Michael stands as one of the most successful pop stars of the 1980s and 1990s. His initial hit, Careless Whisper, debuted in 1984, and he continued to produce a series of successful tracks such as Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, Freedom Run 90, and I Want Your Sex. Michael was widely acknowledged as one of the most prominent pop stars of his time. His public coming out as gay occurred in 1998 following an arrest for a lewd act in a Beverly Hills public restroom. He was a staunch supporter of AIDS charities, including the Elton John AIDS Foundation and AMFAR, often performing at numerous benefit concerts. Michael received three Brit Awards and two Grammy Awards for his musical contributions and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2017. His live performances were renowned for their elaborate stage setups, choreography and costume changes. Beyond his advocacy for the LGBTQ plus community, George Michael had a profound influence on pop culture. He was recognized for his bold fashion choices that merged punk and glam rock elements. Michael was also a trailblazer in the moody video genre characterized by reflective and somber visuals. His innovative music videos for songs like Father Figure and Freedom, 90 inches expanded the boundaries of what a pop video could convey. Furthermore, George Michael's unique vocal style served as an inspiration for many subsequent boy bands, including NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys. Jodie Foster Jodie Foster is a distinguished American actress, director and producer who has been enchanting audiences since her childhood. She is proficient in French, having attended the Lycée Francais de Los Angeles and the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts in Paris. Foster is also an accomplished pianist, showcasing her musical talent in films like The Accused and Little Man Tate. Her cinematic debut was in the 1976 horror film Taxi Driver, and she has since starred in numerous critically acclaimed movies, including The Accused, The Silence of the Lambs, and Contact. She holds a bachelor's degree in literature from Yale University, where she graduated magna laude. Foster is the mother of two sons, Charles and Christopher, with her former partner, Sidney Bernard. In 2013, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama for her contributions as an actress and director. Foster has been known for maintaining a high level of privacy regarding her personal life. However, during a speech at the Golden Globes in 2013, she openly acknowledged her sexuality. Beyond her advocacy efforts, Foster has served as an inspiration to many within the LGBTQ community due to her willingness to discuss her sexuality openly. She has shared the challenges she faced in coming out and the significance of having visible role models who are open about their sexual orientation. Foster expressed her desire for her story to motivate others to be genuine with themselves and live authentic lives. 
She also uses her influence to promote kindness among people regardless of their differences. Jodie Foster is indeed a pioneering figure within the LGBTQ plus community. Rock Hudson. Rock Hudson, an emblematic actor of the 1950s and 1960s, is renowned for his roles in films such as Giant and Pillow Talk. Born as Roy Scherer Jr., he adopted the name Rock Hudson on the advice of his agent. Hudson served in the Navy during World War II, where he was stationed on a ship in the Pacific Theater. His acting prowess earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor for his role in Giant, although he ultimately lost to Yul Brynner. Despite his on-screen persona, Hudson led a dual life as a gay man in private, compelled by the pressures of his career to project a heterosexual image. He engaged in several relationships with men, including actor Jim Neighbors, yet never publicly disclosed his sexuality. In 1985, Hudson was diagnosed with AIDS and subsequently became an advocate for AIDS research and treatment. Tragically, he succumbed to the disease later that same year. However, his enduring legacy continues to be remembered and celebrated. Liberace. Liberace holds the distinction of being one of the most renowned and prosperous entertainers of the 20th century, achieving widespread fame in the 1950s and 1960s. As a pianist, singer and television personality, he captivated audiences with his extravagant costumes and exuberant stage presence. Although there were persistent rumors about his sexual orientation, Liberace never confirmed his homosexuality in public, even taking legal action against a British newspaper for libel when they insinuated as much. This resulted in extensive conjecture and whispers about his personal life. Liberace had a significant long-term relationship with Scott Thorson, who was nearly four decades younger than him. Their relationship was depicted in the 2013 HBO film Behind the Candelabra, but it ultimately ended on bitter terms. Regardless of the speculation surrounding his sexuality, Liberace continued to be adored by his fans and enjoyed immense success as an entertainer. His flamboyant showmanship and theatrical persona resonated with audiences globally. Even after his passing in 1987, Liberace's influence endures. He has been the focus of books, films and a successful television series, and his distinctive style continues to inspire trends in fashion, music and popular culture. Many believe that Liberace was instrumental in creating a path for other theatrical performers like Elton John and Lady Gaga. Marilyn Monroe The idea that Marilyn Monroe might have favoured women over men is indeed surprising, but the actress known for her roles in Some Like It Hot and The Seven Year Itch reportedly had intimate relationships with several notable women, including Joan Crawford, Barbara Stanwyck, Marlene Dietrich, Judy Garland, Brigitte Bardot, Jane Russell, Anne Baxter, and even the ostensibly heterosexual Elizabeth Taylor. Evidence supporting some of Monroe's encounters with women, particularly with Joan Crawford, exists. During her therapy sessions with Dr. Ralph Greenson towards the end of her life, Monroe allegedly confessed on tape about Crawford. Oh yes, Crawford. We went to Joan's bedroom. She had a gigantic orgasm and shrieked like a maniac. Next time I saw Crawford, she wanted another round. After I turned her down, she became spiteful. A Monroe insider stated that Marilyn chose not to pursue a long-term affair with Crawford due to distrust, citing Joan's potential for cruelty and demanding behavior. Furthermore, Monroe's co-workers were convinced of her bisexuality. Jean Negulesco, the director with whom she collaborated on How to Marry a Millionaire, recounted Monroe telling him that she had never experienced an orgasm with a man. Marlena Dietrich is another icon who challenged norms and is credited with popularizing women wearing suits. Emerging from the artistic Weimar culture of early 20th century Germany, Dietrich embraced a fearless and liberated lifestyle. She frequently appeared in pants and tuxedos in films during a time when it was considered unconventional and revolutionized women's attitudes towards pants. Dietrich was also open about her love for both sexes. As early as 1930, she shared on-screen kisses with women in the film Morocco and was romantically linked to figures such as Kay Francis, Edith Piaf, Mercedes de Acosta, and even Greta Garbo. Enjoying this video? Like and subscribe for more, not feeling it? A like would still be appreciated, and your comments will help me do better next time. Freddie Mercury Freddie Mercury, born Farouk Bulsara in 1946, and deceased in 1991, was a renowned and extravagant British singer-songwriter celebrated for his role as the vibrant lead vocalist of the legendary rock band Queen. 
His dynamic stage performances, extensive four-octave vocal range, and iconic songs such as Bohemian Rhapsody have solidified his status as a symbol of musical genius and creative originality. Although Freddie Mercury did not openly discuss his sexuality, those close to him were aware of his homosexuality. His life was tragically cut short by complications arising from AIDS on November 24, 1991, during a time when the disease was prevalent within the homosexual community and support for those affected was severely lacking. Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy was a prominent figure in the golden age of Hollywood, renowned as a major movie star. Despite being married with two children and eventually estranged from his wife Louise, Tracy and his wife never divorced, a decision he attributed to his Catholic faith. It is rumored that Tracy frequently visited the home of The Philadelphia Story and My Fair Lady director George Cukor, who was openly gay. During these visits, which sometimes lasted several days, Tracy was said to have engaged in intimate relations with Cooker's young male acquaintances. Additionally, there are whispers of a long-term relationship between Tracy and actor John Derrick. According to Scotty Bowers, who was known for his connections with celebrities during the Golden Age, Tracy was known to be a generous and kind-hearted man who sought comfort after indulging in alcohol. Bowers recounts personal experiences with Tracy beginning in the early 1950s, where Tracy sought physical closeness and intimacy after consuming scotch. Bowers describes an encounter where Tracy became intimate with him after a night of drinking, an event that was followed by several similar experiences. Despite these encounters, Tracy maintained a public facade of normalcy the next morning. Bowers also notes that through Tracy, he met many influential individuals. Regarding Spencer Tracy's long-term partner, Catherine Hepburn, it is suggested that their 25-year relationship was more of a deep friendship rather than one driven by sexual attraction. Screenwriter and gay rights activist Larry Kramer has commented on the famous couple's relationship, suggesting that both Hepburn and Tracy were gay and were publicly portrayed as a couple by the studio for appearances sake. Hepburn was recognized for her masculine attire and while she had relationships with men, it is believed that she had a preference for women. Scotty Bowers, known as the Hollywood pimp, first encountered the renowned film actress Catherine Hepburn at a Tinseltown gathering, where he was struck by her attire of a suit and short hair with a side part. Bowers recalls the party's host mentioning that Hepburn's studio executives had been urging her not to publicize her homosexuality. During that era, actors, directors and producers had morality clauses in their contracts that could be breached by openly identifying as gay or bisexual. Hepburn reportedly said to Bowers, I know your reputation, Scotty. When you get a chance, do you think you can find a nice, young, dark-haired girl for me? someone that's not too heavily made up. Bowers asserts that he connected Hepburn with 150 women over half a century, averaging about three women per year. Hepburn would typically meet them once or twice before losing interest. However, there was one particular woman named Barbara with whom Hepburn had an enduring 49-year relationship. Scotty Bowers also has insights into other discreet individuals in Hollywood. The story of actor Walter Pidgeon is another example. Bowers recounts that in 1946, Pigeon picked him up at a Richfield gas station on Hollywood Boulevard when he was a 23-year-old ex-Marine working as a pump attendant. Offering a $20 tip, Pigeon invited Bowers to a private home where they met Jacques Port. Pigeon suggested they use the swimming pool without swimsuits due to their privacy. Bowers describes Pigeon's preference as engaging in oral sex with him while simultaneously masturbating. This three-way arrangement involving the three bisexual men occurred multiple times with Bowers consistently receiving a $2 bill as payment for his participation. Pigeon's experience with Bowers led him to share information about this new connection with his gay friends. After these friends also took advantage of Bowers' services, they spread the word about the ex-Marine at the Richfield station, located at the intersection of Hollywood and Van Ness, which included a two-bedroom trailer at the rear. Bowers was eager to connect people with his young associates, regardless of gender. This activity continued for years as Bowers operated a sexual referral service from the gas station, effectively engaging in an underground Hollywood sex trade. He not only participated in sexual encounters with clients himself, but also facilitated opportunities for his financially struggling ex-Marine friends to earn additional income. Over time, Bowers expanded his operations to cater to individuals of every sexual orientation and preference, providing a wide range of companionship and sexual services. Cesar Romero. Cesar Romero was a captivating American actor celebrated for his sophisticated charm and iconic roles. 
most notably as the smooth and legendary Joker in the 1960s Batman TV series. Blessed with a charming smile and an impressive height of 6'3", Romero seemed destined for leading roles. The Cuban-American performer shared screen time with notable actresses such as Marlene Dietrich and Carol Lombard, maintained a lifelong friendship with actress Joan Crawford and achieved legendary status for his portrayal of the Joker in the original Batman film. Less widely recognized is the fact that Romero was gay. Throughout his career, he kept his sexual orientation private from the public, but was open about it among friends and industry peers. Barbara Stanwyck. Many Hollywood historians acknowledge the possibility that Stanwyck's marriages were orchestrated as lavender marriages by studios to maintain her privacy regarding her sexuality. There is substantial evidence suggesting that Stanwyck may have been gay or bisexual. While it cannot be definitively stated that Stanwyck was a lesbian, the speculation surrounding her personal life during the golden age of Hollywood makes it seem quite plausible that she was at least open to relationships with women. Regardless of her sexual orientation, her androgynous and strong presence both on and off screen earned her a dedicated following among the lesbian and gay community. Stanwyck's connection to the LGBTQ community has a long history. Biographer Axel Madsen notes that determining the truth about Stanwyck's sexuality remains challenging. He mentions, people would swear she was Hollywood's biggest closeted lesbian. Actor Clifton Webb referred to Stanwyck as my favorite Hollywood lesbian. Furthermore, Robert Taylor, Stanwyck's second husband and star of Waterloo Bridge and Quo Vadis, allegedly told actress Shelley Winters that his wife was a lesbian and they did not share a bed. Additionally, lesbian singer Tula Bankhead claimed to have had a sexual encounter with Stanwyck. Among all the individuals with whom Stanwyck shared a bond, her most enduring relationship was with Helen Ferguson. Their relationship was never explicitly defined. But if Stanwyck's marriages to men have been termed lavender, then her union with Ferguson might be considered of the Boston variety. Luca Prono in the book Encyclopedia of Gay and Lesbian Popular Culture notes that throughout the 1960s, 1970s and into the 1980s, Stanwyck was regarded as a cultural and personal archetype for lesbians, achieving iconic status within these communities. Prono describes Stanwyck as a woman whose on-screen portrayals of strong and independent women challenge societal norms of respectability. In the 1940s, Stanwyck took on the role of Joe Courtney, a lesbian character in Walk on the Wild Side, 1962, marking one of the first representations of a lesbian character in Hollywood. Despite this, she consistently declined to discuss her own sexuality. A notable instance of her reticence on the subject occurred when she allegedly ejected journalist Bose Hadley from her home after he inquired whether she had engaged in lesbian relations as Greta Garbo and Marlene Dietrich were rumored to have done. As we wrap up this journey through the lives of some of Hollywood's most iconic figures, it's clear that the topic of sexuality has always been complex, especially in the golden age of Hollywood. From secret relationships to public denials, these stories reveal the challenges faced by individuals who had to navigate their personal lives under the scrutiny of the public eye. But they also show resilience, authenticity, and the power of living one's truth. We'd love to hear from you. Which story surprised you the most? Which individual inspired you? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this exploration of Hollywood's closeted stars, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Iconic Inside for more fascinating stories from the world of entertainment. Make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Your engagement helps us bring you more content that dives deep into the lives of those who shaped our culture. 10 Celebrities Who Committed Horrible Crimes Prepare to be stunned, dear viewers, as we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous facade. Celebrities adored by millions, harboring the most chilling secrets. Tonight, we dare to expose the sinister side of fame where the line between idol and villain blurs. Get ready to question everything you know about these stars. The countdown to scandal starts now. Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, who was born on June 5, 1971 in Dorchester, Boston, managed to rise above a difficult adolescence that included violence, drug addiction, and criminal activities to emerge as a prosperous actor and producer. He was raised in a working-class family with a total of nine children, which presented him with numerous obstacles from the very beginning. When his parents decided to end their marriage at the age of 11, Wahlberg made the decision to leave school at the age of 14 and quickly became involved in minor criminal activities and the drug trade. 
In 1988, at the age of 16, Wahlberg was found guilty of attacking two Vietnamese men in two separate incidents. In the first case, he and his group of friends threw rocks at the men while yelling racial slurs. The following day, Wahlberg assaulted another Vietnamese man, striking him with a substantial wooden stick and continuing to use racial insults. Initially, he was charged with attempted murder, but this was later changed to felony assault. Mark Wahlberg only spent 45 days in prison for the assault, which he used as a pivotal moment in his life. He reflected, I was there, locked up with the kind of guys I'd always wanted to be like, and realized that this was not the life he desired. He found himself in the worst situation he could envision and was determined never to return. Thanks to the support of his parish priest and his brother Donny, who was part of the well-known boy band New Kids on the Block, Wahlberg started to make positive changes in his life. Initially, he embarked on a music career under the moniker Marky Mark before making the transition to acting in the mid-1990s. Despite initial doubt from others, Wahlberg surprised his critics with his talent, delivering well-received performances in movies such as Boogie Nights, Three Kings and The Departed, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award. In more recent times, Wahlberg has expressed regret for his past behavior, stating, I did a lot of things that I regretted, and I certainly paid for my mistakes. Since then, he has committed himself to self-improvement and being a better member of society, working as an executive producer for hit television series like Entourage and Boardwalk Empire. Jay-Z Sean Corey Carter, widely recognized by his stage name Jay-Z, stands as one of the most prosperous and impactful rappers in the history of the genre. He was born and spent his formative years in the troubled Marcy Projects located in Brooklyn, New York, a place deeply affected by the drug crisis and widespread poverty. The early life of Jay-Z was a testament to the difficulties of existing in such an environment, with the omnipresent crack cocaine epidemic shaping his experiences. During a conversation with Oprah Winfrey, Jay-Z openly talked about his participation in drug dealing during his teenage years. He remarked, The drug dealers were my role models. Rappers weren't successful yet. Jay-Z confessed that at the age of 13 he started selling crack cocaine, viewing it as a necessary act for survival and a path to mirror the local drug dealers he admired. Reflecting on his time in the Marcy Projects, he stated navigating this place was life or death. Even with his ties to the drug trade, Jay-Z discovered comfort and a refuge in the world of rap music. As he shared with Oprah, it was a gift. I had a notebook full of material. His initial musical guide was the fellow rapper Jazz O, and it was through this relationship that Jay-Z started to earn acknowledgement in the local hip-hop community. However, Jay-Z's journey to stardom was marked by significant incidents and obstacles. In 1999, he became involved in a widely publicized event at a gathering where he was accused of assaulting record producer Lance Riviera. Jay-Z eventually admitted to a misdemeanor charge and was given a three-year probation period. Looking back on the incident, Jay-Z has remarked, if anybody knows Jay-Z, Jay-Z's a nice guy. He acknowledged the stabbing, which stemmed from a tense altercation, and has since shown regret and endeavored to leave the incident behind. Throughout his professional life, Jay-Z has shown incredible resilience and versatility, shifting from a life of drug dealing to emerging as one of the most prosperous and esteemed individuals in the music business. His story stands as evidence of the strength of resolve and the capacity to surmount difficulties, regardless of personal and professional obstacles. Loving this content? Show your support with a like and a subscribe. Not impressed? A like would still be nice. And your feedback in the comments will help me create better content next time. Matthew Broderick Matthew Broderick, the renowned American actor recognized for his endearing and youthful roles, has experienced a sorrowful and deeply affecting incident that has left a lasting impact. In 1987, during a holiday in Northern Ireland with his then partner, Jennifer Grey, Broderick found himself in a catastrophic car accident that led to the untimely deaths of two individuals. On a day marked by rain, Broderick was operating his vehicle on the incorrect side of the road when it collided directly with another car, resulting in the fatalities of Margaret Doherty, aged 63, and her daughter Anna Gallagher, aged 28. Broderick sustained significant injuries in the accident and later admitted guilt to the charge of careless driving, incurring a penalty of $175. He was not indicted for vehicular manslaughter, a decision that has drawn disapproval over the years. In a rare conversation, Jennifer Grey, who occupied the passenger seat during the accident, recounted the distressing ordeal. 
I was the only living witness because Matthew had survived. But he was unconscious and had amnesia and was very badly injured, she disclosed. I thought he was dead. I didn't even know there were two other women who were tragically killed at the time. It's just something that you just don't come back from in the same way. Broderick, who has been deeply affected by the event, has also discussed the subsequent effects. It was extremely difficult coming to grips with what happened, he admitted in 2002, although he mentioned that the passage of time and therapy have aided in his process of dealing with the tragedy. Martin Doherty, the son and brother of the victims, has since extended forgiveness to Broderick, saying, he didn't kill my mother and sister deliberately, there were strong feelings at the time, but I have since forgiven him and feel no anger toward him. In spite of the tragedy, Broderick has continued to have a prosperous acting career, featuring in notable films like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and The Lion King. Nonetheless, the car crash has imprinted a lasting mark on his life and career, with the actor seldom discussing the incident. The event stands as a humbling reminder of the vulnerability of life and the enduring influence of our actions, even when they are not deliberate. Oscar Pistorius Uchaum Oscar Pistorius, a former South African professional sprinter, gained widespread attention for both his extraordinary athletic accomplishments and his tragic personal life. Born on November 22, 1986 in Johannesburg, South Africa, Pistorius was born without fibular bones in both legs, leading to the amputation of his legs below the knee at just 11 months old. Overcoming this physical obstacle, Pistorius became a Paralympic champion and made history as the first amputee to participate in the Olympic Games. Tragedy was a part of Pistorius's early life, with his parents' divorce occurring when he was six years old, followed by the loss of his mother at the age of 15. Raised in a Christian household, Pistorius was motivated by his parents to engage in sports. He has acknowledged his mother as a significant influence, saying, my mum was the one who kept me going. She was the one who kept me focused on my goals. Oscar Pistorius's athletic career was distinguished by many accomplishments. He secured gold medals at the 2004 Paralympic Games in Athens and set various world records in the 100-meter and 200-meter races. In 2012, he made history as the first amputee to participate in the Olympic Games, advancing to the semi-finals in the 400-meter event. However, Pistorius's achievements were sometimes overshadowed by controversy, particularly regarding his prosthetic legs, which the International Association of Athletics Federations, IAAF, and others believed might provide him with an unfair advantage. On February 14, 2013, tragedy struck when Pistorius fatally shot his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, at his home in Pretoria. He maintained that he had mistaken her for an intruder in the bathroom. Pistorius was subsequently arrested and charged with murder. During his trial, he was acquitted of murder but found guilty of culpable homicide. He was sentenced to a five-year prison term, which he completed, and was released on parole in January 2024. The release of Pistorius has elicited a range of reactions, with Reva Steenkamp's mother demonstrating acceptance of the decision, while also highlighting the ongoing emotional toll on her family. Pistorius is now required to adhere to strict parole conditions which include limitations on his travel and a prohibition on consuming alcohol. Even with his release, the legacy of Pistorius is overshadowed by the tragic circumstances surrounding Steenkamp's death. In a statement issued after his release, Pistorius's family conveyed their appreciation for the support they had garnered. We are grateful for the support we have received from the public and the media during this difficult time, they expressed. We hope that this decision will bring closure to all parties involved. The narrative of Pistorius stands as a poignant reminder of the lasting repercussions of a single, fateful night that irrevocably changed the lives of all those concerned. Despite his extraordinary athletic accomplishments, the legacy of Pistorius is now inextricably linked to the tragic events associated with Steenkamp's death. Rate your outrage over Oscar Pistorius's crime with a 10, outraged or zero, unaffected. Comment with your thoughts and share to show support for Reva Steenkamp's loved ones and all victims of domestic violence. Chris Brown Christopher Morris Brown, an American multi-talented artist known for his singing, songwriting, rapping, dancing and acting, has experienced a career filled with notable highs and lows, marked by remarkable achievements and notable controversies. Raised in the small town of Tappahannock, Virginia, Brown was born with a deep love for music and dance. 
His innate abilities for singing and performing were first recognized at church and in local talent shows. At the tender age of 13, he was spotted by a local production team, which subsequently led to his signing with Jive Records in 2004. Brown's self-titled debut album was released in 2005 and included the hit single Run It, which topped the charts, drawing early comparisons between Brown and renowned artists such as Usher and Michael Jackson. Despite his rapid ascent to stardom, Brown's career has been overshadowed by a number of high-profile incidents that risked damaging his reputation. In 2009, he was apprehended for assaulting his then-girlfriend, the renowned R&B artist Rihanna, in an incident that was widely covered and left Rihanna with visible injuries. Brown later referred to the incident as a monster moment, expressing remorse by saying, I felt like a monster and acknowledging that the event continues to linger in his memory. He was given a sentence of five years of probation and community service for the assault. In 2012, Brown found himself in another controversy when he engaged in a physical altercation with rapper Drake at a nightclub. The conflict, which was reportedly driven by their mutual romantic history with Rihanna, resulted in injuries to several individuals present at the scene. The nightclub owners filed a $16 million lawsuit against both artists, asserting that the celebrities should have foreseen that their notoriety and celebrity would ensure that their acts had far-reaching and devastating effects. In 2013, Brown faced further legal issues when he was charged with misdemeanor assault for an incident involving a man outside a hotel in Washington, D.C. This action violated the terms of his 2009 probation, culminating in Brown serving over 100 days in jail in 2014. Despite these challenges, Brown has persisted in his music career, producing and releasing successful albums such as FAME 2011, which earned him a Grammy Award for Best R&B Album. He has also worked in collaboration with other prominent artists, including Rihanna, on various projects. However, his difficult personal life and ongoing legal troubles have frequently cast a shadow over his musical achievements, resulting in a polarizing presence within the entertainment industry. Khloe Kardashian Khloe Kardashian, the youngest among the well-known Kardashian siblings, gained popularity alongside her family members on the reality television show Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Her path to fame, however, was not devoid of obstacles, including a very public arrest and a short period of incarceration. Born in Los Angeles in 1984 to parents Kris Jenner and Robert Kardashian, Chloe was raised in an environment of privilege. She attended several schools in the locality, including Montclair Prep, and completed her high school education at the early age of 17. The early years of Chloe's life were influenced by significant family events, such as her parents' divorce in 1991 and her father's participation in the O.J. Simpson murder trial in 1994. Chloe's professional journey began in 2007 with the debut of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. The reality show's popularity spawned spin-offs including Courtney and Chloe Take Miami and Courtney and Chloe Take The Hamptons. In 2012, Chloe co-hosted the second season of The X Factor and alongside her sisters introduced various clothing lines and fragrances. In 2007, Chloe's personal life encountered a major hurdle when she was apprehended for driving under the influence, DUI, in California. She was stopped by law enforcement and failed a series of sobriety tests. Initially, she was mandated to carry out community service and complete an alcohol education program as part of her sentence. Despite fulfilling the community service requirement, Chloe breached her probation by missing multiple sessions of the alcohol education course due to her demanding schedule. Chloe's probation violation led to a 30-day jail sentence. Her mother, Kris Jenner, made a notable remark during this period. Kim, would you stop taking pictures of yourself? Your sister is going to jail. However, due to prison overcrowding, Chloe spent less than three hours in jail. Her representative clarified at the time, Chloe is ready and willing to serve out her sentence, no matter how long and where, and have this resolved. The events surrounding Chloe's arrest and her short jail term were featured on Keeping Up With The Kardashians, illustrating the family's response and Chloe's acceptance of responsibility for her actions. This episode served as a turning point for the reality star, who later emphasized the significance of learning from one's errors. In spite of these adversities, Chloe's professional life continued to flourish. She launched her own talk show, Cocktails with Chloe, in 2016 and appeared in the health and fitness series Revenge Body with Chloe Kardashian. 
Throughout her career, Chloe has demonstrated resilience and determination, consistently managing the complexities of her public life. Gian Gomeshi. Gian Gomeshi, previously a well-known figure in Canadian media, has experienced a significant downfall due to accusations of sexual assault and harassment. Born to Iranian parents in London, England, Gomeshi relocated to Thornhill, a suburb of Toronto, in 1974 at the age of nine. He later studied at York University, where he earned a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science with a focus on women's studies. Gomeshi initially gained public recognition in the early 1990s as a member of the folk pop band Moxie Fruvus, which was recognized for their unique sound and social commentary. His shift to broadcasting occurred in 2002 when he began hosting the arts-focused CBC Newsworld program. Gomeshi's career at CBC progressed swiftly, with him hosting multiple music-related shows before securing his own program, Q, in 2007. The cultural chat show became a key element of CBC Radio, highlighting Gomeshi's polished and trendy persona. Gomeshi's rapid decline began in October 2014, when he was dismissed from CBC following the network's receipt of information that led them to conclude they could no longer maintain a relationship with him. In response, Gomeshi took to Facebook, asserting that his termination was a preemptive measure based on the potential exposure of his sex life due to a campaign of false allegations. Subsequently, multiple women came forward with allegations of sexual harassment and assault against Gomeshi. In November 2014, he was formally charged with four counts of sexual assault and one count of overcoming resistance by choking. These charges were divided between two criminal trials, with the first commencing in February 2016. During the trial, Judge William Hawkins delivered a harsh assessment of the complainant's credibility, suggesting that their testimonies were less than full, frank and forthcoming. Gomeshi was ultimately acquitted of all charges in the first trial. The second trial, initially set for June 2016, was subsequently dismissed when Gomeshi agreed to a peace bond and issued an apology to a former CBC colleague for engaging in sexually inappropriate behaviour. Gomeshi's swift descent from a reputable position serves as a potent reminder of the repercussions associated with alleged misconduct, emphasising that even individuals with thriving careers and well-established public images can face severe consequences. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. was born on April 4, 1965 in New York City to the unconventional filmmaker Robert Downey Sr. and actress Elsie Downey. Raised in Greenwich Village, Downey started his acting journey as a child, debuting in his father's 1970 film Pound, where he played a puppy. He continued to have minor roles in several of his father's films, but his parents' divorce at the age of 13 prompted a move to Los Angeles with his father, who struggled with drug addiction. Downey's early career was characterized by both critical recognition and personal difficulties. He received accolades for his roles in films such as The Pickup Artist, Less Than Zero, and Chaplin, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award. However, his drug addiction and legal issues started to impact his life negatively. Throughout the 1990s, Downey faced multiple arrests for drug possession, including heroin, cocaine, and an unloaded .357 caliber magnum. These incidents resulted in probation, rehabilitation periods, and even imprisonment, notably a 15-month term in a California state prison in 1999. Downey described his prison experience as deeply distressing, with the pervasive sense of evil in the air and the omnipresent risk of violence. He remarked, You could just feel the evil in the air, and that was no trouble at all because it was kind of like just being in a really bad neighborhood, and noted the absence of opportunity and the presence of threats. Despite these hardships, Downey managed to overcome his struggles after his release from prison. He attributed his recovery to his resilience and the innate human ability to adjust to seemingly unbeatable challenges. He stated, as long as you have a willingness to do harm, it is unlikely that you'll be targeted, and reflected on the distinction between the appearance of being willing to cause harm and actually possessing that willingness. Downey's resurgence was truly extraordinary. He subsequently took on leading roles in a series of both critically acclaimed and financially prosperous films, such as the Iron Man and Sherlock Holmes franchises which solidified his position as one of the most esteemed and generously compensated actors in Hollywood. His transformation from a troubled young man to a celebrated actor exemplifies the strength of resilience and the potential for atonement inherent in the human spirit. Brandy Norwood 
Brandy Norwood, the celebrated R&B singer and actress, encountered a profound tragedy in her life when she was involved in a lethal car accident in 2006. On December 30th, 2006, Brandy was operating her Land Rover on the 405 freeway in Los Angeles when she did not reduce her speed in time and collided with the rear of a 2005 Honda, leading to a series of collisions. The driver of the Honda, 38-year-old Awatef Abudihaj, lost her life in the accident. Despite the tragic result, Brandy was not indicted with any offense, as the California Highway Patrol concluded that she was not under the influence of drugs or alcohol at the time. The period following the accident was a challenging time for Brandy. She endured severe public examination and disapproval, with numerous individuals reproaching her for her role in the fatal crash. The event had a substantial impact on her career, prompting her to temporarily withdraw from the public eye to deal with the emotional distress. There was a time when I was learning about myself through the public eye, through Moesha, and then there's this brandy thing, and then there's me, the person inside, Norwood later contemplated, who is who? I was living my life for everyone else, and I'm not there anymore. Brandy's path to overcoming the obstacles she encountered was an intensely personal journey. She embraced introspection and self-discovery, utilizing techniques such as morning pages from the book The Artist's Way to manage her emotions and uncover her genuine self. This phase of contemplation and development eventually guided her to a position of enhanced self-assurance and sincerity as she re-established her love for music and acting. Born in Macomb, Mississippi and raised in Carson, California, Brandy Norwood initiated her career as a supporting vocalist for various adolescent pop groups. She joined Atlantic Records in 1993 and launched her self-titled debut album the following year featuring her breakthrough hit, I Wanna Be Down. Brandy proceeded to attain significant success in both music and acting, starring in the popular sitcom Moesha and winning a Grammy Award for her duet with Monica, The Boy Is Mine. In spite of the difficulties she confronted, Brandy's tenacity and commitment to her art have persisted in inspiring her supporters and solidifying her standing as a genuine symbol of R&B music. Will Smith Will Smith, the renowned actor celebrated for his magnetic performances and uplifting demeanor, has encountered numerous challenges throughout his life. Born in Philadelphia in 1968, Smith was raised in a home where domestic violence was prevalent, having witnessed his father's physical abuse towards his mother. This distressing experience would later influence his behavior and responses, as demonstrated by the notorious event at the 2022 Oscars. At the beginning of his career, Smith faced legal issues when he was apprehended in connection with a supposed assault on his record promoter, William Hendricks. He was charged with aggravated assault, criminal conspiracy, simple assault, and recklessly endangering another person. However, all charges against him were subsequently dropped. Undeterred by this early legal hurdle, Smith has since achieved extraordinary success in the entertainment industry. He initially gained fame as a rapper alongside DJ Jazzy Jeff before transitioning into acting with a starring role in the popular sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. His film career then skyrocketed with major hits such as Men in Black, Independence Day and The Pursuit of Happiness, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor. However, Smith's personal life has also faced its share of difficulties. His marriage to Jada Pinkett Smith has often been under public scrutiny, with the couple candidly discussing their non-traditional relationship dynamics. This transparency has made them frequent subjects of humor, as was the case with Chris Rock's remarks at the 2022 BAFTA Awards. The 2022 Oscars event, during which Smith struck Rock on stage in response to a joke about Jada's shaved head, brought Smith's past trauma and issues with anger to the forefront. In his memoir, Smith disclosed the severity of the domestic violence he observed as a child, stating, When I was nine years old, I watched my father punch my mother in the side of the head so hard that she collapsed. I saw her spit blood. He further expressed that this incident, more than any other moment in my life, has defined who I am. Smith's actions at the Oscars, though widely criticized, initiated a dialogue about toxic masculinity and the significance of discovering healthier methods to deal with emotions. As he continues to handle the repercussions of the incident, Smith's journey stands as a reminder of the enduring effects of childhood trauma and the necessity of confronting it directly. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein, once a prominent American film producer, established the entertainment firm Miramax alongside his brother Bob in 1979. 
He rose to prominence in Hollywood, generating numerous critically lauded and financially prosperous independent films, including Sex, Lies and Videotape, Pulp Fiction and Shakespeare in Love, the latter of which garnered him an Academy Award for Best Picture. Nonetheless, Weinstein's reputation has been marred by a multitude of accusations of sexual misconduct and assault, tracing back to the late 1970s. In October 2017, in the wake of investigative journalism from The New Yorker and The New York Times, more than 80 women lodged allegations against Weinstein. This development ignited the hashtag MeToo social media campaign and instigated a widespread re-evaluation of sexual misconduct within the entertainment industry and other sectors. Harvey Weinstein's formative years were characterized by a strained relationship with his mother, whom he characterized as hectoring, and a father who he perceived as ineffectual. As a student, Weinstein was recognized for his extensive knowledge of films and his aspiration to create his own movies, even revealing plans to produce a film about the lives of his friends. However, he also grappled with insecurities regarding his physical appearance, with a classmate describing him as pasty-skinned and overweight, and really hideous, which might have played a role in fostering his subsequent predatory actions. Following the establishment of Miramax, Weinstein emerged as a leading figure in independent cinema, generating acclaimed films and securing numerous accolades, including an Oscar for Shakespeare in Love. Nonetheless, his authority and sway were also allegedly harnessed to facilitate his pattern of sexual misconduct with a multitude of women asserting that he exploited his professional standing to pressure them into engaging in sexual activities. In 2018, Weinstein was apprehended and charged with rape in New York. In 2020, he was convicted of a criminal sexual act and rape, resulting in a 23-year prison sentence. Subsequently, he was extradited to Los Angeles to confront further charges, and in 2022, he was found guilty on three out of seven charges, leading to a 16-year sentence to be served consecutively to his New York conviction. Weinstein's downfall has been termed the Weinstein effect, igniting a more extensive examination of sexual abuse and misconduct in the entertainment industry and other fields. His narrative stands as a stark warning about the hazards of unbridled power and the significance of ensuring that individuals in positions of influence are held responsible for their conduct. Phil Spector. Phil Spector, born Harvey Philip Spector in the Bronx in 1939, was a groundbreaking music producer whose contributions to the industry were unfortunately eclipsed by his later conviction for murder. His early life was touched by tragedy when his father died by suicide at the age of nine, leading the family to relocate to Los Angeles. There, Spector developed his musical abilities, creating the teddy bears during his high school years. The group achieved a number one hit with To Know Him Is To Love Him in 1958, but they disbanded as Spector pursued a career in music production. Spector rapidly gained recognition devising his trailblazing wall of sound technique, which integrated orchestral components with rock and pop music. Known as the first tycoon of teen, he produced numerous hits for female vocal groups like the Crystals and the Ronettes in the early 1960s, such as Da Do Ron Ron and Be My Baby. Spector's influence was profound, inspiring musicians ranging from the Beach Boys to Bruce Springsteen. Brian Wilson remarked, he was the first person we thought of as a record producer. He was like a god to us. Spector's accomplishments persisted into the late 1960s with the production of significant albums for John Lennon, George Harrison, and the Beatles' final album, Let It Be. Nonetheless, his unpredictable conduct and increasing reclusiveness started to impact his life. And by the mid-1970s, Spector had mostly withdrawn from the music scene. In 2003, a somber chapter unfolded in Spector's life with the death of actress Lana Clarkson in his home under enigmatic conditions. Following a widely publicized trial, Spector was found guilty of second-degree murder in 2009 and was sentenced to 19 years to life imprisonment. In a 2011 interview, Spector expressed, I didn't mean to shoot her, it just happened. He passed away in prison in 2021 at 81 years old. Spectre's musical legacy, despite its magnitude, is inextricably linked with the sorrowful events that curtailed his career. Echoing this sentiment, Lennon once stated, Phil Spectre is a genius. He was simply too much for this world. As we conclude our discussion on celebrities who committed horrible crimes, we're left with a mix of emotions. 
It's a reminder that fame doesn't exempt anyone from the consequences of their actions. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment below with OK if this resonates with you. For more compelling stories, don't forget to like and subscribe to Iconic Inside. Your engagement fuels our mission to explore the untold narratives of the famous and the fallen.